Yeah. Can we make you a note that we need to go to um, that supply and get some later? Yep. You can do that tomorrow.
Oh, here's my headphone. <clears throat> it is okay, right on. It was behind the monitor. I was looking for it earlier and I couldn't find it. They fell behind the monitor. So we'll go ahead and flap our gums with the microphone. Good stuff, good stuff. I can't believe this. Sure, I'm using a 16 inch, but the thing is, the 16 inch will give us a narrower field of view compared to a smaller scope, like an eight inch or even six or four inch. Those smaller scopes are going to give us a much, much wider field of view. Sensitivity will, will remain the same. This is so cool. Black and white is so easy to use. I mean, you don't have to do anything. Just gain an exposure and throw in a couple of stacks like this one. Actually, it's a five, uh, five stack uh, average, just to clean up the noise a little bit because we're running short exposure. And the gain is fairly low. So out of the gain of 50, it's only at 13.0. Uh, earlier on, I aligned the scope on two stars. I did a reset, factory reset, and I got a narrow message saying that the GPS port the LX200 is, uh, is cool. Try to bypass that, that didn't work. So I did a two star alignment anyways, and uh, you can see the tracking is much better. Oh, it looks like I'm gonna have to take that 16 inch apart and fix the board or... Then again, don't need the uh, GPS board because I prefer to enter information by hand, the date, where you savings times and stuff like that on the television. But that's me. It's not for but very surprised to see that the little $49 focal reducer performs so well on a, on a small chip like that. Working quite good. It's perfect, this camera, actually. Earlier on, the MFR8 was good, uh, but I think we're getting a little bit wider here because it's a smaller lens and for this uh, type of uh, uh, sensor. It's only a one third of an inch, a little bit bigger than a third of an inch. Four, 1.3 millimeter diagonal. So a six, I mean, 6.4 millimeter diagonal. So it's a small little guy, but it's got big pixels, 6.9 by 6.9, and the sensitivity, the design of the actual camera. Excellent electronics, low noise, and oil oh boy, are we getting I'd like to hunt some galaxy. Set up the second computer next to me here on the map, but it's not hooked up on, up on the uh, two. Where we are at, uh, and any galaxies or what from there, I think. Fable, oh, we got Harp, Harp 103. Earlier galaxy. Okay, I'm gonna go for that. Wait a minute, I don't have uh, harp in it. No, I just got NGC 19. Okay, me, you gotta put more 145,000 object and the keypad's not enough. Me, you, you really need to bring this up because these cameras will obviously see everything here. Here's the Galaxy 6239. Okay, we may want to go to this one. 
show what it looks like, but. Let's go to IGC 623. We are going to stop the stacking here for a moment. Oh. Is six two three nine. So, okay, I think we need to uh, bump her up a bit, take away the sharpening. And I wonder if we could increase the gain, but hey, we're going to get noise with this. So, I think I would rather go to about maybe two cents. Okay, it's 1.5. This is 1.5 seconds. <laughs> Okay, uh, Deep Sky never got <laughs> never got so good. 1.5 seconds and the gain is at 9.0. So let me put the gain at 13.20. Uh, That's my favorite spot. Wow, not bad at all. This is 1.5 seconds. And here you can see it on the screen. 1.5 milli, 1,501 milli. Yeah, that's an NGC as well. I don't know what the magnitude is. Let me look it up. On, uh... Okay, this is magnitude 12.4. It's also a UGC 10.577. Too big. This is not bad at all. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pump that up. Don't forget, I'm in out that. Let's pump that up to three seconds. For three seconds. All right, let's. Uh, the three second shot. We're going to have to hook up the computer on the scope so we could go way, way deep and get a much variety of. Cool to look at. The old usual, but man, oh man, when you got a camera that powerful, you really want to use it to its maximum. Three seconds. I'm going to pump up the, the gain. This is a 13.20. Here's 21.8 for the gain. Obviously, it's a little bit noisier. So, there you go. The thing that ain't on the upper left corner. So, that means my. Whoa, what is this? All right, satellite time, UFO, alien days tomorrow. That's it. Okay, here we go. Let's go up to four second exposure. All right. Oh, it makes a big boost for one second. Usually on a on a camera, you'll get a little bit of a difference. And uh, this is substantial. It's quite a lot more. Okay, let's pump down to five seconds. There you go. Now, here's what we need to do. Uh, we'll leave the game the way it is, or we could go to the color adjust and play with the gamma. Let's adjust the gamma down to darken the background. I obviously get light pollution, so why don't you get lower the contrast? There. That don't do it. Okay. Can do it. Okay, that's not a problem. Three seconds. We can certainly, here's back to, what you do is uh, stack it. 
try something different here for a moment, folks. So bear with me if you see this thing go away while you're on me. So it's all about an experiment until things explode and blows up. Help destroy. Self self destruct. Do a frame alignment because I'm on, uh, I'm in Alcaz, and we're going to do uh, just to clean up the background a little bit. You can see in the background, I got lots of light pollution here. Gain is back to 13.2, I believe it is. Oh, Phil from Florida, how are you, Phil? Nice to see you on. Good stuff. How you been? I hope everything is okay for you. We sure miss all of you that came uh, came up here in Canada to the, uh, to the video star party. We certainly miss you all. Brian is on as well. Good stuff. Phil, Mark, oh man, this is cool. Lots of fun. This is a galaxy here. This is a... Uh, Let's give it a chance uh, for this thing to start. Five seconds and gain is at 13. 13.8 actually. And I do have some thin clouds everywhere. We do see some stars, but it's thin clouds. Oh, okay, I'm not too sure, Jack. I could, uh, wait, 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 wait. is it below the galaxy itself? Six o'clock, I see a very faint dot there. Oh, fuzzy, fuzzy spot there, Jack, so I don't know. Yeah, there's definitely something there. Yeah, Brian, it's pretty well the same thing. Here. We had a really nice day today, and then when the sun went down, clouds rolled in, so it's not uh, too, too uh, pleasant. Okay, I'm going to stop the stacking. It just won't kick in. What I'm going to do is use the planet mode instead of... Oh, there we go. Oh, well, all right. I think it was stacking. Five seconds and gain at 13.8. That's not bad at all. Profane fuzzy galaxy with no features or whatever it is. It's kind of cool. We're not looking at local uh, object here. And when, when I mean by we pretty well always go big and colorful and things like this. But having a camera like this, this is powerful. You want to explore the night sky, that's the way to do it. You want to go extra galactic, that means outside of our own galaxy. This is far away. A lot further than our, uh, our own local uh, group of objects like N27 and operation completed. All of that stuff, all night, but it's local stuff. So when when you have a camera that's that sensitive, hey, uh, I think uh, it works quite well with uh, black and white to hunt galaxies. Taking a bit longer to just ah, nothing's happening yet. <clears throat> it worked here today. I think it's because the image is moving. My tracking is moving. Oh, Steve, it says right on top. It says the DS287M. Yeah, this is the Sky Raider, the Malagan Sky Raider, DS287M. Very, very cool uh, guy. It's the most sensitive camera on the market, bar none. You're talking about uh, 
quantum efficiency of well over 95% on these things, well over 7,000 millivolts of output. It's the most powerful one that there is. This is an industrial uh, grade uh, sensor. They use those for machine vision in the manufacturing environment. We are seeing some very, very nice uh, results. Yeah, I'm going to stop the stacking uh, thing. Yeah, we got clouds at the moment. There you go. That's why the image is all uh, dimmed and background is white as clouds. We're looking through clouds at the moment. Thin clouds all over the place here tonight. So it's not a good time to do this, but hey, uh, why not? I took it. I took uh, this uh, opportunity here this evening to align the scope again. So the tracking seems to be okay. It's much better than before. So that's one good thing. Because if I want to use uh, the, U, the new uh, universe uh, on it. Uh, uh, yeah, and you know, uh, I did alignment earlier. I did a factory reset on the, on the scope. I have to do it once a year because when the tracking start to go haywire on me and the voltage is not accurate, it's it's time to do a factory reset. And this old beast here, uh, it's been like this since day one and I bought it. So what I did earlier, when the sun was up, I was able to see a few stars. Uh, when the sky was blue, I did a factory reset on the scope. And, and I wanted to find out the GPS unit in the scope is dead or it is dead. So. I did a manual, uh, uh, like, or to do a two-star alignment. So I did a basic two-star alignment and uh, using the camera. And uh, I tell you, it really, really improved the tracking. This is now that. This is cool. This is pretty nice. Too bad we got cloud. Uh, you can tell in the background. Oh, that's a hot pixel. Uh, did you see that? Not a hot pixel, but look at the screen. Whoop, it's gone now. That was a cosmic ray that hit sideways. It landed uh, on an angle on the chip. That is cool. We rarely see those. We'll see a hot pixel lit up, and on the next refresh, the hot pixel is gone. That was a cosmic ray. But to see them arrive on an angle like that is very rare. These are the ones that could cause damage. See, the intensity of the image just changed again at every refresh. There we go. That's clouds. All right. Clouds are coming in. It's it, it's really neat to see cosmic ray hit the sensor when you do live. If you do long exposure, you can't see them. It's just going to leave a trace, and it's going to be part of the artifacts you got to remove in the process. But with video, Sensitivity is so much more than an imaging camera. You have the luxury to run anywhere from two to five second exposure or even less and witness cosmic ray from one frame to another. <laughs> yeah, this is cloud, obviously, that we're looking at. Okay, I was going to go to another target. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm going to stop that. Lower the uh, exposure down to about 2.6 seconds. Let's increase the the gain a bit. And uh, to give me sensitivity, I'm going to swing that on another target. I'll be right back, folks. Hang on.